Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck Cohen. Thrilled today that my guest is Bill Plant, who has covered the White House for years for CBS. Bill, thank you for being here. With Pleasure. Me. Tell me, Bill, we, we talked earlier about how much coverage has changed at the White House since you've seen it. You started in the Reagan years, right? In the Reagan years, in 1981, when I started covering the White House, there were only three networks, and the news every night at 6.30 was what we said it was. Now, of course, the news is whatever you want to find. It's all out there, and it's up to you to decide who you trust. Well, that's the interesting thing about it, because there is so much availability. We talk about we are the most informed society in the world, have the most availability for information, but are we partaking of it? The news is out there. You know what? It always has been, but it's up to you to go find it and to judge whether the quality of what you're getting is up to your standards. Can you believe? I mean, you pick papers, many people do, or they used to anyway, by their politics. You know, if uh, in Chicago where I grew up and you worked, if you were a Republican, you read the Chicago Tribune. That's right. If you were a Democrat, uh, you read either the Sun-Times or in earlier days, uh, one of the other papers. Uh, nowadays, people can still pick their news sources according to their politics. No, name no names, but it's out there. You can decide to whom you want to listen. Well, Chicago's a good example. You bring it up because when I was out there and starting out at the time when you were starting out, there were four newspapers. Before that, it had been eight or nine. Now it's basically down to two newspapers. And I know a lot of young people who work here at Corvus, as I do, and they don't read newspapers at all anymore. So right. I wonder what the reliability is. I mean, you say they make a judgment. How do they make that judgment? Well, that's where the education of the news consumer comes in. I wish that every kid in middle school were taught how to be a consumer of news. We're taught that something isn't true just because the newscaster or newsreader or the blog says it is, but there's attribution. Is this attributed to some source? Why should I believe this? Or what should I doubt? We don't do that, maybe in some places they do, but people have to make their own informed judgment about what they choose to believe. Now, this is easy if you simply want to follow one political party or the other, but if you're going to have any kind of critical judgment, you have to be able to say to yourself, can I trust this source? That's a good point. Let me switch back to all the years you've covered the White House. And there is often a criticism of the White House press corps that they're kind of lapdogs for the administration. I've heard it many times. <laughs> is there some justification? In it? The president gets a lot of coverage by virtue of the fact that he's president, no matter who the president is. Uh, it's on cable 24-7. It's usually on one of the network newscasts on any given night or maybe on all of them. But here's the question to ask. I'm seeing the president, and what the president did today, but what's the thrust of the story? If, is it just about what the president did and the president's message, or does it contain an alternative viewpoint? If it's a policy thing, is there somebody in there with a different idea? A contrary idea. If it's political, is there somebody from the other party in the story saying, yes, here's what the president says, here's what the White House is saying today, but hey, there's more to this story than that. There's another viewpoint. Well, in the rush to get news, sometimes though it is just some of the reporters there are like recording secretaries. Wouldn't you agree? There's that, but it depends on, again, where it goes. I mean, if you're just publishing what happened at the White House, why would anybody want to read it? It's usually not that interesting. The president today named five people to, uh, nominated five people to be federal judges. Well, unless one of them is from your hometown. You don't care. Yeah, yeah you don't care. Let's uh, very quickly do Osama bin Laden. He's, he was assassinated. This White House sort of screwed up in its original reporting, didn't it? They would have it that they didn't. They would say that they tried to make as much information uh, available as quickly as possible and then had to change it because new facts came out as the people in the raid were debriefed. Let me ask you one quick question because we're running out of time. Who was the most, or which White House was the most forthcoming and which one tried to use you and gave you the least amount of information? There's, in every White House, there's been an effort to make the president available to the public over the heads of the media. 
it's become progressively easier to do that because technology has made it easier. The White House now has its own blog. The White House now has its own video on its own uh, internet page. So because it's become easier using technology, I think the present White House is the most advanced at that. They've all tried to do it. And some with success. Sometimes. Bill, thank you so much for being here. Bill Plant has been here with me, and it, I hope we can come back again sometime. I'm Chuck Conconey, and this has been Focus Washington.